Hey, what's up, Gamer Skeleton Mystic? I am here today in my Red Barn Farm. Behind me are a bunch, bunch of evil magma peas. The reason that we're here at the garden today is to answer a question that has gone back and forth, back pretty much in a friendly manner, but nonetheless, back and forth and back and forth since the need for pet training and mega snacks arose. That question is, what is actually better, couch potatoes or evil magma peas? It doesn't matter who you talk to, there's a differing opinion and differing reasons why that person thinks that couch potatoes are better or evil magma peas are better. Today in this video, we're going to examine these two different seeds piece by piece, step by step, and see which one is truly the king of the garden. Now, before we get started, we're going to do a couple of things. First of all, we're going to step away from the evil magma peas because a group of them like that is loud like a convention center in full swing and I can't hear myself think when they're whenever they're going beep, 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 and all that other stuff that they're doing over there. So we're just gonna step over here to the edge of the property where our little moose is grazing quietly and peacefully and the couch potatoes are not bleep, 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 in our ear. The next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna stay right here, at least for the moment. And we're going to pop up an old John Madden football style scoreboard on either side of me. Here you go. Okay, now that we've got our scoreboard up, we're going to do this based on several different criteria. Comparing each seed to the other seed to see which one is going to claim the golden check mark. All right, here we go. First things first. Maturity time. That's one of the big things that all of you seem to be concerned with us. How fast they mature? You know, how quick can I get my snacks? What in the world have I been waiting around so long for? Come on, give me my snacks. Do it. Go, go, go. Okay, let's address that problem. Two elder. Now, I'm going to use two elder because that's when we get our mega snacks. The mature harvests are all well and good, you know, and they'll give you treasure cards and they'll give you reagents and all that bit, but we'll address that problem later. Let's talk about the snacks. Guys, we need some grub. We need to eat here. Or at least our pet does. All right, maturity time. Here we go. Four couch potatoes. Time from the time the minute you first plant the seed until it, it hits elder. 258 hours. I'm not going to break it down from the time to young, the time to mature, and all that. I'm not going to break it down. I'm just going to give you a total. 258 hours from the moment you plant that seed and given that you tend it the whole time properly, till the time that it hits elder. 258, now I know that sounds like a lot, but guys, you gotta think about it. You plant these seeds, then you go off and play PvP, or you quest, or you log off and you beat up on your brother and sister, or you do any of those things that you do whenever you're out there living your life. And these seeds do what they're doing while you're off doing that, so you don't really miss that 258 hours. It's done before you even realize it. Okay, we've got that out of the way. 258 hours for cow's potatoes. For evil magma peas, the total is 272.15 hours. So that's like, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes or something like that. I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm not good with fractions anymore. It's been a long time since I've been in school, and fractions are fractions. You know what I mean? Let's just call it 272 hours. So there you have it. On the scoreboard, bing! Couch potatoes. Uh, you know what? I ought to put a bing sound effect in there. Let's do that. From now on, I'm going to put a bing sound effect in there when there's a check mark. Let's do that. Anyhow, the winner of the time to maturity is couch potatoes. So, given that you have 60 couch potatoes and given that you have 60 evil magma peas, you're going to be able to accept, access your mega snacks, oh, let's see, 60, about 14 hours faster with couch potatoes than you will be able to with evil magma peas. So, couch potatoes, there's a the sound effect, get the golden check mark for maturity time. Let's go ahead and move on to the next criteria that I wanted to use. And that is, oh, let's see. Let's, let's do plant needs that, because that's another factor. You know, it, it depends on how much energy you're going to have to burn to get these things to elder. Some people don't have a great big energy bar. You know, you can't just go and chow down on some, uh, on some checks or something like that. Whenever you need a little bit of energy, you actually need to let that have the stuff build up or spend real money on energy potions 
or play Grub Guardian forever and ever and ever to get energy potions. Regardless of that, what you need is some energy to take care of plant needs to make these bad boys get to Elder and give you snacks in the first place. So energy is a very important component in the seed decision. What we have for the needs are, let's go with couch potatoes first, just like we were before. Whenever you're tending couch potatoes, you need music, you need water, and the plant spell, or the pest spell that you need, the biggest one you need is Bug Bolt, which is a rank one spell. So it only takes five energy for that. To do a large spell to cover your entire bed, assuming that you're covering a large bed for both of these, you need 15 energy for the music, you need 15 energy for the water, and you need five energy for the Bug Bolt. So that puts you at 35 energy to tend your entire bed of seeds one time for couch potatoes. 35 energy. All right? For evil magma peas, you need to have energy for music, energy for pollination, energy for water, and at least, whenever you're doing growing a large bed again, because you'll have at least some of them that have rank 2 pests, you'll need the rank 2 wind spell. So here you go. Bing, you're looking at music, 15, pollination, 15, water, 15. So that's 45 right there. Then the rank two spell, I believe, is 10. So you're looking at 55 energy needed to take care of one bed of evil magma peas. So the final tally on the scoreboard is, here you have it. Bing, I feel that couch potatoes are the better value due to energy usage. 35 versus 55 is a good deal any day of the week. Okay, next up on my list, and this is an important one to me. It's a, it's a subtlety, but it's an important one because it's a like, and likes have to do a lot with how soon these bad boys will mature for you and give you your snacks. The couch potatoes will generate pixies, which is a like of, that they have, which will increase the rate at which they mature. Sorry, I was looking at that mushroom. It kind of tripped me out for a minute. Anyway, they will generate their own pixies, which increases the rate of time that they will mature in. Evil magma peas do not, do not produce pixies on their own. You can add pixies to them via the pixie spell, but then again, if you do that, you're burning energy. I believe that one's 25 energy. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's either 20 or 25. But anyhow, you're burning 25. I thought it was called 25 because I think that's what, I did. that's what it is. You're burning 25 energy to put a pixie on there that evil magma peas won't put on there themselves. So, for the pixies requirement, guess what? You guys got it. Bing! I'm sorry. I had too much fun with that bing. I got to stop it. The couch potatoes get the golden check mark. They generate their own pixies and the evil magma peas don't. For the next requirement, or for the next thing to compare these seeds, we're going to go over likes. Okay, for likes. Likes are those things which, if you, if you put on these plants, will make them mature faster and get to elder faster and get your snacks before beep freezes over. You know what I mean? Hell will freeze over, and you might not still have snacks to feed your pet to keep them warm. <laughs> that might happen. All right, for likes. Both plants get get good marks because they both like the Red Barn Farm or the Botanical Gardens. If you have the Botanical Gardens, great, but I prefer the Red Barn Farm personally because that's a plant like that you can buy with gold. You can buy a Red Barn Farm with gold. You're not out there at the GameStop or online or wherever, forking over the dough to get yourself a bundle for the Botanical Gardens, spinning up the cash, you know, burn up mom and dad's credit card or burn up your own credit card, whatever the case may be. You're not doing that. You're farming for a little while, you're taking maybe some of that gold that you got from existing gardens, and you're buying yourself a Red Barn Farm for in-game gold. Slam, bam, thank you, ma'am, no fuss, no muss, and we are done. That's how that works. All right. They both like a Red Barn Farm, which is all good. They both like botanical gardens if you happen to have one, which is all good. The couch potatoes like King Parsley. They like litter. They like the sandwich station, and they like the gnome. So all together, you have six likes to help couch potatoes mature faster. Evil magma peas, the likes that they have, the Red Barn Farm or Botanical Gardens that we already mentioned. The Boom Shroom, 
as the plants they may like to, uh, to accompany them, the djembe drum, the egg basket, the gnome, the garden gnome, and they also, again, like as I said, like pixies, even though they don't generate their own. So they have six likes as well, the same as couch potatoes. So on this layer of the scoreboard, you know what we're going to do? Just so <laughs> just so Evil McAfee's don't feel left out because they're, they're a little bit behind so far. We're going to give them both a nice golden check mark. Here you go. Next up, and this is one of the things that we want to hear about, the rewards. Let's talk about some rewards. We've been doing all this energy burning and all this planting and all this plowing and all this fooling around and all this waiting and, 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 you know what I mean, just to get some rewards. We want our mega snacks. We need to train our pets. Our last 10 pets have probably failed and ticked us clear off. And now we're on pet 11 and don't know what we're going to do if we can't get ourselves some more snacks. So it's time for the rewards. Let's talk about what the rewards are. Couch potatoes will give you three, count them three, major mega snacks. Okay, they will give you fancy yogurt at about 31%. I think it's like 31.4, something like that. They will give you fancy yogurt about 31% of the time, which is one, which is the top mega snack. That's the one that's 50. That's the one you want to see anytime you, you go bing. <laughs> All right. They will also give you Captain Cantaloupe about, I think it's right around the same percentage, maybe 33.6 or 8 that they will give it to you at. So 33% of the time you'll get a Captain Cantaloupe instead of a fancy yogurt or instead of the third one, which is golden wheat bread. You'll get that one about 34 to 35% of the time. So they drop three major mega snacks. You're looking for fancy yogurts because of the highest value, but hey, I tell you what, Captain Cantaloupe and Golden Wheat Bed are no slouches either. Those are some top snacks, and anybody would be happy to have them. So they drop three mega snacks. Now, Evil Magma Peas. I'm gonna go around here. I'm still avoiding these <laughs> these Evil Magma Peas because they're loud. I'll go up front here for a little while because I've been. I made tracks in the back here. I got a trail going. Anyhow, as I was saying, Evil Magma Peas will give you, count them, five. Five different mega snacks. Okay? They will give you the Captain Cantaloupe at about 24% of the time. They will give you the Cherry Tomato at about 18% of the time. They will give you the Fancy Yogurt, the best mega snack that you can currently get, at about 20% of the time, which compares to... Cocktails 31% of the time, by the way, just as a side note. They will also give you golden wheat bread about 17% of the time, which is half of the time of couch potatoes. But they will also give you mystic dragon fruit. Now, this one is probably the toughest requirement to call. And that is because couch potato will give you three mega three different my types of mega snacks. Okay? And evil magma peas will give you five different types of mega snacks. Here's where that gets interesting. You can get every stat requirement for your pet that you need out of couch potatoes except for intellect. None of those three snacks will drop you any kind of major intellect. So if you're looking to fully train your pet, in other words, get all of its stats maxed out as well as all of its talents up there nice and jimmy good, then you will have to go to one of the evil magma pea snacks because couch potatoes leave out intellect in their stat giveaways or, or their stat produ production what have you evil magma peas even though they have five snacks will not give you agility so you're missing out on one stat one major stat on each of these plants no matter what you do here's the kicker though even though evil magma peas give you five snacks they, of course, give them to you, you know, uh, any particular one at a lesser percentage because there is five snacks instead of three. That's why the percentage of, is lower versus the three snacks for the couch potatoes because, they, I mean, it's simple. You have to divide the fraction smaller. That's all. I mean, that's what happens. If you're getting a golden wheat bread on an evil magma pea, you can't also get a Mr. Dragon Fruit and a cherry tomato and, a, you know, you can't. You get one mega snack per drop. And they have five on their loot table, so of course the percentage is split up. Now, as to the stat values, you had that same problem. Couch potatoes are missing intellect. 
Evil Magma Peas are missing agility. So as far as which one is better based on the stat production for your pet, I'm going to have to say either I'm going to give you a bing for both of them, like that, or I'll take a bing away, because neither one of them is complete. It depends on if you're a glass is half full or a glass is half empty kind of person, whether they both get a golden check mark or whether neither one of them does. All right, so I'm a glass is half full person. Let's give them both a golden check mark. All right, there you go. Now, we've covered pretty much all of the major purposes for growing couch potatoes and evil magma peas based on the snacks and based on what they produce. But let's go with one more. And this one is the gold and or side treasures that you get. You know, you're growing these for mega snacks, but nobody is going to turn away extra gold. And here comes my boat just coming up, to, <laughs> coming up to meet me. That's nice. No one's going to turn away extra gold, okay? If you're picking up 700 gold per drop on these, you're, you're not going to be mad. You're going to go over there. You're going to buy yourself a new suit at the tailor's. You're going to go over there and buy yourself a new snack at the snack store. Maybe even go buy yourself a new house. You know, you're going to go out there and pick up some real estate. That, that's possible because you're going to have all that extra gold. Now, I'm not going to compare the individual amounts of gold because I'm going to tell you right now. Let's, put the, let's pop this back up on the scoreboard one more time. This is one of those areas where they both have their pluses and minuses and neither one really outs the other. The fact that couch potatoes drop in powers. If you've grown couch potatoes for very long or you have PVP for very long or you've needed gold for very long, you gotta know, empowers the man. That's the stuff you want. You want empowers. You can go to the bazaar on a bad day and sell them bad boys for 800 gold a piece. And that's nothing to sneeze at. That's what I'm talking about. Go collect your, <laughs> go collect your cash. <clears throat> All right. Now, as far as evil magma peas go, they don't drop in powers. They don't give you the great big 800 or 1,000 gold per card treasure cards. But they do give you a lot more in reagents, and they give you a lot more in various treasure cards. This is one of those areas where I think, overall, really, I think that evil magma peas out-edge couch potatoes. Yes, the empowers are great, but like I said, on a, on a bad day, you're getting 800 per treasure card. I think, personally, that you're getting so many more varied drops from Evil Magma Peas because they don't necessarily drop just one treasure card or just one reagent. They will drop multiples, you know, sometimes two, sometimes three of this stuff. And I think that that just barely edges out what you get from the empowers. The empowers are great, don't get me wrong. But I think just by a small, small margin that the Evil Magma Peas edged them out in cash for drops. So this time, there you have it. Your Evil Magma Peas get the golden check mark. All right, let's, let's compare this out here now. What have we got? We have got for couch potatoes, one, two, three, four, five. We've got five. For Evil Magma Peas, we have got three. All right, there you have it. So to this interviewer's opinion, couch potatoes overall are just a tiny, tiny bit better. They're not hugely better, but they are a tiny bit better, both in what they cost to grow, both in what they give you back for what they cost to grow, and that is, that's important. They may not be as good in gold, but they're still good in gold. All right. Now, I am sure that even after this video, some of you are going to have your own opinion about couch potatoes versus evil magma peas. But, well, this is the numbers I got, and I don't think that they lie. What do you guys think? If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, a good heart smash, and as well, subscribe and share. It would be wonderful if I saw more of you guys around here. Until next time, this is Skeletal Mystic reminding you that whatever else you do, always love the game. Peace! Hey, what's up, you're Mystic. I am here in Ravenwood because it is the last time for the very first ever Treasure Hunters Incorporated. I am going to start you out all right here. I am going to give you the clues after I explain some of the rules because, well, this is the first time. And then we're going to get started.